So this uh, this is uh, this is a paper um, at uh, at the CCS workshop, uh, which I'm going to present on uh, Monday, and um, it has a cool name, uh, Zaphod, um, efficiently combining linear secret sharing schemes and garbled circuits in scale. And this is joint work work with Abdel, Manuela, Nigel, and Tim. You can of course see the paper here. And uh, what is it about? Well, as you might have guessed, it's about multi-party computation. So what, what is MPC? You've got a bunch of parties, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, and they all want to compute the function over their inputs while keeping, it pro while keeping their inputs private. And um, you want to devise a protocol which does that. And this is basically multi-party computation, compute over private data. And uh, the problem here is how can we achieve multi-party computation? Well, there are basically kind of two ways. There's, there's the secret sharing um, based uh, MPC engines or there's the garbled circuit way. And uh, for secret sharing, the secret sharing ones, they're good for uh, when you have like computers which are connected over a fast network or a LAN. Uh, these are good for either arithmetic or Boolean circuits. And it's also good when the circuit has like a low depth and uh, many, many multiplications because um, usually in the secret sharing uh, engines, we have, uh, when we evaluate the function, uh, the communication complexity, the round complexity depends on the depth of the circuit. Whereas in the garbled circuit paradigm, uh, they're good when we have slow networks um, and uh, there's like uh, basically a high round trip time between the, the computers and uh, we can execute all those, all those functions which we want to compute in a constant round fashion. So it's like very low uh, round complexity, but it requires lots of, lots of, um, lots of pre-processing to, to do every, every AND gate. And they're very good for Boolean circuits. They're not so good for, uh, for arithmetic circuits. Um, so why, why, do, why, why should we switch between these two? Well, basically, suppose we have uh, this kind of many algorithms we want to do over private data. We have, uh, I don't know, linear regressions, decision trees, support vector machines. For example, here we have like, um, here there's like a sample of a support vector machine we have uh, matrix A, a vector X, and another vector B, which are secret share between the parties. And uh, what the linear support vector machine does, it just takes a linear combination of AX, and then it adds uh, the support vector B, and uh, the output is like basically an argmax max of, of that vector. So we just take like the index, which has the maximum value, and that's the answer, that's the classification answer for a support vector machine. So would it be nice to have some sort of way of actually splitting this circuit into two? We say, okay, execute the first part, which is very good on the arithmetic side, and then uh, with, with linear secret sharing scheme, and then execute the second part, which is very good for garbage circuits, because that's, uh, uh, the argmax is a, is a good function to evaluate over, over uh, binary circuits. So there's some benefit to do this and this is um, there is some prior work to do this uh, basically this was done for semi-honest case when parties behave honestly and uh, for the two-party case we uh, there is like a work which is called Abby done by Denler, uh, Schneider and Solner in 2015 which basically takes uh, some secret sharing schemes uh, which either works mod to the K or mod or uh, even a binary secret sharing scheme and then they convert between uh, this secret sharing scheme and the yellow garbled circuits. So basically they switch between these two to obtain more efficient protocols. And there's also recent work published at CCS last year, uh, Abby Free, which does this for free parties, uh, malicious but with honest majority. Uh, so this, this is good when at most one party is corrupt. Now, what about the dishonest majority case? So we've got a bunch of parties which want to compute <laughs> over private data and they want to switch between these two paradigms. Is there any way to do this? Well, there is like a straightforward way 
so let's let's take the the most efficient protocol for the for this honest majority for linear secret sharing schemes, which is PEATS, and let's take the most efficient for the garbage circuits, which is WRK. Uh, this is uh, uh, this was at CCS two years ago. So now the, the straightforward way of converting between these two is basically uh, doing many AND gates. So every conversion we need to do, so every switch, if you remember in that circuit we need to do, requires uh, around 100,000 AND gates to evaluate in the garbage circuit. So there, there's, a, there's a check done in speeds which needs to be emulated in, uh, in WRK using the garbage circuit. So that's very expensive. So doing the other way around, it also requires to do the same check in WRK um, to, to, to translate your inputs to, to speeds. Um, well, uh, this year, uh, me and Tim devised a, a way to, uh, to do this check uh, in uh, less than 1,000 AND gates. So, and doing, going from garbage circuit to secret sharing scheme, requires zero AND gates. Uh, but there's a caveat to this, there's some additional pre-processing which uh, was proved here that it's not that expensive, it's actually much cheaper than doing the whole garbage circuit evaluation of 100,000 AND gates. So what we do in this, in this paper, in this work, we actually um, clean up a lots, of, uh, lots of work in the previous paper because uh, the previous paper was a lot of micro benchmarks this time we have the, the whole system integrated together and we, we devised the method to have like even a cheaper so this, this pre-processing which requires you to switch between these two engines uh, it's called a double authenticated bit also dubbed as DABIT and we, we reduced this DABIT to basically um, maybe like five, five times, around five times faster than the previous work and we also, so again we integrate all this work and we also extended the compiler of scale to support uh, arithmetic uh, in Z to the K using garbage circuits. And very important, we document all the changes. So if you want to see what we've done, uh, there's a, uh, a huge documentation which, which you can consult. So how general is this uh, DABIT method of going from, garble, from linear secret sharing to garbage circuits and vice versa? So if we look at all, all those protocols uh, for this honest majority uh, with uh, secret with linear secret sharing schemes, uh, there's some work which does uh, which works over arithmetic circuits uh, in a field or arithmetic circuits over a, over a ring, and there's multiple protocols to do garbage circuits. So these DABITs actually are quite useful to go from uh, speeds over a, over a prime to all these. Uh, garbage circuit schemes and also you can actually go uh, from from a ring from speeds to the K to from a speed uh, from speeds within the ring to uh, to garbage circuits and uh, we actually conjecture that this is actually going to be very fast due to some recent paper at SMP and if we combine the, some of these techniques here to, with our DABIT method this conversion will be very very fast. So there's some future work to be done there. Um, and those DABITs actually can be used to convert between uh, speeds which works over a prime field and a, a ring. And it also works to convert from any honest majority protocol to any garbage scheme you want. So that's cool because it's very general to use these DABITs and convert between all, all, all these uh, protocols. But our focus for uh, for this work is going from speed, which works in a in a field, uh, to WRK, which is the most efficient garbage protocol. So to to give you like a brief overview, what we what the of what techniques we applied, uh, we have uh, malicious MPC protocols. These are usually based on some pre-processing phase, which requires some public key crypto, and then the online phase where we get to use our inputs, uh, which are secret. Uh, and a very fast phase, which is information theoretical. So all, all these protocols below corresponds to this kind of framework, where you've got the, this pre-processing and the online phase. Uh, so let's talk briefly about speeds, which works over a prime field. Um, we all, well, we don't all know, but um, 
the, the Mackie, the, there is a secret Mackie, which is shared between the parties. So the, the, um, the secret sharing scheme here is additive and uh, it's linear and every party has an additive share of some Mackie. And this is, suppose this X in a, in a box is a, is a secret, is an input. And this is also shared additive. And we also have a share of the Mac on X. So this alpha times X represents the Mac on input X. And this, this sharing of the uh, Mac shares, the sharing of the authenticated input is going to be used later to be for a check, which will guarantee that the parties behave honestly during, uh, during, the, proce during the computation procedure. So if, how do we add stuff? Well, basically every party just adds locally. If we've got a share of Y or share of X, we can all add locally. Then we obtain a sharing of X plus I, and then the same goes, goes with the authentication. To multiply, it's a bit more difficult, but let's focus first on how we provide inputs. Basically, if we have a mask, if we have our input and we want to put it into a box, so let's say Alice has an input and she wants to put it into a box, namely to secret share it, how does she do that? Well, basically just retrieve a random mask, which is pre-processed, and then mask, mask, she masked her input with that mask, broadcast that, and now every party can adjust the share. So the, the way you provide inputs is just uh, retrieve a random pre-processed mask, you open your um, input, uh, which is masked with using that mask and then you you can adjust the shares to have a secret sharing of the of Alice's input Okay, how you open how you go from a, from a box to uh, Something which is clear you basically every party just broadcast the shares and then there's a Mac check at the end of this phase and The way you multiply well, it's a bit more complicated So if you have two secrets and you want a secret mul secret sh secret multiply them then you need to retrieve this uh, special pre-processing, which is called the pivot triple. And that's, that's a bit more complicated. We're not going to deal uh, dive into that, but it's just some openings. Uh, the, main, the main cost here uh, for, the, for multiplying is basically producing that pivot triple. Uh, of course, the, after we open, there's, there's some math check at the end of the computation and open values. So if we talked about speeds, which is uh, about linear secret sharing schemes. If we talk about WRK, this is garble circuit. Uh, what does it mean to evaluate a garble circuit in MPC? Well, suppose each party has some, uh, some inputs to, to, to some circuit and they want to secretly, secretly add those inputs. Uh, the way they provide inputs is very similar to speeds. They just retrieve a random mass, they broadcast their mass input, and now they can evaluate the garble circuit using those signal bits. So inputs are very cheap. XOR is for free due to some 2008 trick. Um, and mod P arithmetic, if you want to perform mod P arithmetic using Boolean gates, that requires some, some AND gates. So it's a bit more expensive. Whereas mod P arithmetic was very cheap doing it in speeds. So the main idea for the DABIT is uh, you go, you want to go from speeds to WRK. How do you do that? So you have X in, in a box and you want to achieve X, but in a different kind of box, which is a, in a garbled circuit box. How do we do this? Well, you take this X and would it be nice if we would have like some random mask and then we open this random mask. So um, open this, open our mask input we do some mag check outside the circuit, and then we feed that, that uh, opened value to the garble circuit, and then we add uh, that random mass, the same random mass, which was in the garble circuit. Uh, but we put, this, we put it now in the garble circuit. So now it seems like we kind of offload our problem to basically going from x uh, in speeds to x uh, so our inputs in speeds to our inputs in GC to some randomness which is in speeds and has the same value with the randomness in the GC. But actually this is, this is quite, quite easy to do, um, generating this double pre-processed mass. So in our paper we've, in, uh, we've done um, an improvement of this DABIS protocol. It's called DABIS. I don't know if, how familiar are, are you with this dabbing. Uh, it's, popular dance, I think. Well, I don't know how popular it is, but uh, there's a dance. 
So this is uh, the second version of it. So this is uh, how do we how did we devise such protocol? Basically, um, um, we got inspired from some SMP paper which does a conversion between a, a boolean and a ring version of speed. Um, but and uh, we tried hard to do it this way, but actually uh, we. Um, we had to turn the problem around, so we had to go from FP to F2, so we have those, those shares in speeds and we, we want to go to some shares in, in the Boolean case. And uh, for their case, it was actually easy to do because this truncation operation is uh, local. For us, this is uh, going to cost, cost a bit, but we, we found a way to kind of modify our shares, modify the shares of the random bits to, to make them kind of... Um, match between the between speeds and uh, the Gauss circuit. So how does it work? So first we generate some random bits in speeds. So just imagine that these are shares in speeds uh, such that they're all sum that they all sum either to zero or one and no one knows which bit is this. So how, how does it work? Uh, basically every party has some sharing of that bit, right? So now now they're going to do something totally crazy. They're going to take the mod 2 value of that share and then they're going to feed it to, um, to, the, to the garble input. And now you're going to say, well, wait a second, that totally messed up the shares. That's, uh, that's not good. But if you actually look a bit uh, closely, so if we have all of these, so take, take the first bit. If we have this bit, uh, and we put it into variable circuit and then we XOR uh, the share that was input. So uh, we have this share which was put in the garble circuit and now we have this share which was put in the garble circuit. But now if we XOR one uh, to this, to, to these shares, we actually gonna obtain B1, but now in the garble circuit domain. So basically just uh, look at the shares Take the mod 2, feed those into the garble circuit, and then if you offset the new share with by 1, then you're actually going to get the same bit as the one you started in speed. Now, of course, you need to take care of malicious security, and that's a bit hard. Uh, so we're going to use the check the, uh, the SMP paper has, basically take lots of random linear combinations of these bits and check whether they're equal or not. So just adjust the shares, put them into the GC, take some random linear combinations, and then if all of them pass, then you know that those shares are actually the same as the ones in the garbage circuit domain. Now the end part is a bit more tricky, and um, I don't think we have time to talk about that. So how, how does this random linear combination work? Well, you have a random linear combination over mod P, and you want to check it over mod 2, uh, and you have like a bunch of them to guarantee security, so I don't know, like around two to the uh, two to the forty security to the uh, one hundred and twenty-eight. So depending on how many equations you have, you you've got the soundness of two every time. You've got the soundness of, of one over two every time you you do one equation. So how do you check this mod p versus mod two equality? Well. Uh, you just take the least significant bit of this. So this, this is a local operation doing this random linear combination. The, this LSB requires some pre-processing material computing the least significant bit in MPC. But uh, it's, it's, uh, you only do it like a couple of times for, the, for, many, for many bits, so this cost is amortized away. So how, how does it work for, uh, for multiple parties? So you, you've seen that for two parties it was quite easy because every party <laughs> just locally adjusts the shares and take them out too, put them into the GC, variable circuit. Uh, but in the end party case, so suppose we have four parties, we need to generate uh, like two times more bits and now we're gonna exchange the shares. Uh, so Alice is gonna exchange her share of B1 with uh, the second Alice, and the second Alice is going to exchange her share of B2 with the first Alice. Bob is going to do the same, and now you can basically adjust uh, the shares locally and then put them into the GC again so that they all match. It's, uh, it's slightly more complicated, but you, you can check the details in the protocol, but 
just uh, remember that now we need twice as many random bits and we also need to do the XORs of these bits to get, uh, to get the final double shared bit. So, um, what about some numbers? I don't know how clear is this. So basically, uh, Scale had previously the implementation of, um, of uh, myself and Tim and um, this was like kind of like 380 kilobits per, per, per dabit and it had a throughput of uh, around 1000 dabits per second. So now we, we've improved for the two-party case uh, more than three times and the throughput is uh, at least doubled. And we can see that for the three and four parties, there's a quite a big jump from two to three parties, but that's because for three party case, we actually need to do, uh, so if you remember, we kind of duplicate the parties. So the free, for the three party case, we actually need to duplicate Alice and then execute kind of a four party protocol in a three party manner uh, with, the three part, with three parties. Uh, but then uh, for the four-party case, we see that the jump is not as high from the two-party case, which is um, good. Uh, and uh, also the jump is high because, uh, again, for the three-party case, we need to double the number of random bits we input to the GC. And uh, we also need to do some extra XORs, which are costly. Um, and now one point I want to make here is that the full integration is quite challenging because once we've got the speech engine which works over linear secret sharing theme and we have the garble circuit engine and in this garble circuit we need some random bits and to produce like this the random triples where you need to do the end of the gates you need those bits but you also need those bits to do something else so that's that's one thread uh, well there's actually two threads here but uh, for speed, we actually need to do much more. We, we've got this input, we need to provide inputs. So it's all, all of these arrows represent special pre-processed material to perform uh, computation using that specific engine. And now we've, got, we've added this that bit, which needs bits uh, from both of the engines. And we also need the, uh, okay, I guess the triples have to come from speed, not from the GC. Um, and this dabit is going to pull off like many, many, pre, um, a lot of pre-processed material to do the online phase. And now we've got this online thread, which actually can uh, switch between these two. So there's a lot of arrows going on there. And we, after uh, some discussion, we've ended up with this nice picture, which is in the documentation where we have many threads and we need to manage all of them in a nicely way such that in the end you actually compute on private data. Uh, what's nice is that it's documented, so don't worry, you can read it, it's, uh, it's readable by a human being, you don't need to read code, uh, you can only read, read pictures and text. Um, so there you see that there's a lot of threads happening here, so if you've got like multiple online phases, uh, you need to spawn, for every online phase you need to spawn like uh, uh, many, many preprocessed triples. So I, I'm just, I just want to stress that uh, integration is a pain, and um, if you want to do it properly, it's, uh, it's, it's expensive. But it's worth it because now we can actually switch between these, these two schemes, between garbage circuits and linear secret sharing schemes. Okay. So now for conclusions and future work. Um, can we generate lab bits faster? And the answer is yes. And um, I don't know, maybe in three days we're gonna have that <laughs> a new print. Um, and um, basically we kind of uh, managed to um, get rid of the n part, n over two party XOR. So remember if we wanted to extend to multiple parties, we, we needed uh, much more bits and we needed uh, some XORs in speeds which are which are costly so we, we got rid of those and uh, it's actually just the same cost of generating one random bit uh, with some additional checks but those are amortized so and of course more interesting examples where we actually use these conversions uh, will come soon so i guess that's it thank you